Knights are sporting a new look this season behind flashy point guard Earl Duncan. While fellow Syracuse transfer Keith Hughes has made a definite impression on the inside. Well, the Knights rule the Garden State this season. Game two brings us the high-flying Tigers of New Tom Savage with his first bucket for Rutgers tonight will go over the 1,000-point mark. He's an excellent threat from three-point range. There you see leading the league, leading his team in scoring, and he'll be looking to put it up from behind the arc. The battle cry here tonight is deck the hall. We'll find out if Rutgers and the Scarlet Knights can do that in a moment. Right now, back to Chris Fowler. Okay, thank you, John Saunders. Welcome to our college basketball studio. Sounds like the Rack Pack is ready, as the Rutgers students call themselves. They believe that New Jersey belongs to them this season. And it's always important when an Atlantic 10 team gets a chance to beat a team from their more publicized big brother, the Big East. They love to do it. We saw Rhode Island beat Providence last Saturday night. Our second game, a terrific So some news from college football, some coaching changes, and also college basketball news. But enjoy the first half, everybody. I'll see you at halftime. ESPN's NCAA Basketball, Seton Hall at Rutgers, is brought to you by the exciting, innovative, unconventional new spirit of Dodge, by the insurance companies of the Kemper Group and the independent agents who represent them, and by Budweiser, each wood aged with that clean, crisp taste. This Bud's for you. It seats 8,000, but they'll squeeze as many as nine in here, especially with the Battle of New Jersey underway. Right now, for tonight's starting lineups, we want to go and join Jim Wilson, our public address announcer. Jim. Good evening and welcome to the Lewis Brown Athletic Center on the campus of Rutgers University. Tonight, the Scarlet Knights of Rutgers host intrastate rival, the Pirates of Seton Hall University. Here is tonight's starting lineup for the Seton Hall Pirates. At one forward, a 6'8 senior from East Orange, New Jersey, number 30, France Volsi. The other forward, a 6'5 senior from Atlanta, Georgia, number 31, Michael Cooper. At center, a 6'9 junior from Newark, New Jersey, number 32, Anthony Avent. At one guard, a 6'3 freshman from Jersey City, number 24, Terry DeHare. At the other guard, a six-foot junior from Far Walkaway, New York, number 20, Oliver Taylor. And the head coach of the Pirates, P.J. Carlissimo. And now for the Rutgers Scarlet Knights. At one forward, a 6'5 junior from Trenton, New Jersey, number 35, Tom Savage. The 
other forward, a 6'8 junior from Carteret, New Jersey, number 31, Keith Hughes. At center, a 6'7 senior from Washington, D.C., number 24, Anthony Duckett. At one guard, a 6'2 senior from Elmwood Park, New Jersey, number 13, Rick Gattaca. And at the other guard, a 6'3 junior from Los Angeles, California, number three, Earl Duncan. And the head coach of the Scarlet Knights, Bob Wenzo. These teams have been meeting since 1916. Rutgers leads 14-12, but the Hall has won the last three. Back with a tip in a moment. To the Lewis Brown Athletic Center, John Saunders along with Clark Kellogg. Seton Hall 22-0 when they hit the 80-point mark. Rutgers never lost to the Pirates here at the Lewis Brown Athletic Center. Here's a look at your officials for tonight. Tim Higgins, Art McDonald, and Pete Pavia. We're about ready to tip it off, and Clark, I know you saw a great one here to oh, oh. end the Atlantic 10 season last year in the tournament. That's right, the same type of atmosphere, atmosphere here tonight, John. Excitement, a sea of red. I'm on the edge of my seat, and we just got started. Seton Hall controls the tip. Oliver Taylor is the point guard for Seton Hall. There was some question whether he'd start. He has a bad ankle. DeHair is not shy. He bombs away early. Earl Duncan will also put it up, and he knocks down a three-pointer to start the game. Taylor throws up one with the right hand that goes. <laughs> he was questionable as far as whether he would start tonight because of a sprained ankle, but that shot off balance and all, a good indication early for him. He had a very strong game against Wake Forest early. He was the one who was really keeping Seton Hall in the game as they actually led for most of it. Got tremendous quickness. Both he and DeHare have the green light. It's Duncan hard. works on DeHare and hits it. That's going to be a tough matchup for Terry DeHare. DeHare. Duncan is a big, strong, physical guard. DeHare pushes it off. Bolsey can't get it to go, and Avent loses it, but it'll still be Seton Hall ball. Taking a look at P.J. Carlismo, who took his team to the championship game, and Ramil Robinson hitting those free throws ended the dream, but what a great run by the Hall. Well, they had an excellent team, very strong defensively. Michael Cooper bombs away from outside. You know, I talked to P.J. this morning, and he talked about handling this crowd, not allowing Rutgers to get off to a real quick, explosive start. And so far, the Hall has done a nice job of coming back, countering Rutgers' basket. Well, we talked about it earlier. The Hall is a team as Savage lets it go, and there he is. Tom Savage goes over the 1,000-point mark. He's the third fastest man at Rutgers ever to do it. Phil Sellers, of course, and Robert Lloyd, and the 21st man overall at Rutgers to go over 1,000 points. Terry DeHare with a nice move and hits the shot. But you talked about it earlier, that the Hall likes to wear you down. They're so physical. That's exactly what they want to do. They'll run selectively, but they like to play man-to-man, -man, sag in. Olsen and Aitman have blocked 23 shots between them, and over the course of a game, they can just physically wear you down. Hughes tries to lob it over the top to duck it, but Avent gets his hand on it and knocks it away. Here's Tom Savage, 59 games to hit the 1,000-point plateau. And quite a career after transferring here from Virginia Tech. The Hall, they'll play all man-to-man. -man. The key to watch is whether Volcher or Avent get in the foul trouble. Duncan, a nice dish, but Duckett can't convert. Still has it. And a charge as he leans into Franz Volsey, who had the position. Franz Volsey did a nice job there cutting off the baseline. Duckett not handling the ball cleanly in traffic, and that's a must if you're going to get up good shots against a strong interior defensive team. The Scarlet Knights lead it by two, 8-6 early here in the first half. three-point range and hammers it down. He's the leading scorer as a freshman. Well, P.J. Carlissimo gave him the job from day one, and that does a, commit, that does a wonder for a guy's confidence coming in as a freshman to know that he's got the green light and he's going to be the starting two guard. DeHare turns it up on defense as well, working on Duncan. 
The Hall with their first lead of the game here early on. Hughes can't find an opening. Duck it. Hangs it down. <laughs> Travel in the turnover as Taylor was double teamed by Hughes and Datica, and he took a walk. That's what Winslow hopes to do with the press. He wants to score field goals and get into the press early to try to force some turnovers and get this throng on their feet. Carter comes into the game. Craig Carter, number 23, 6'3", junior out of Brooklyn, New York. He's got to be one of the best six men in the country. 57% field goal shooting so far this year, Craig Carter. Savage thought he was hammered as he put the shot up, but no whistle. Avent working on Hughes. Good pass to Volsi underneath on the baseline. He hits it. Boy, Michael Cooper, body beautiful himself, showing you how he can jump it inside to the post-up player. Cooper second on this team in assist, averaging over three assists a game. Savage down the lane, throws it up, won't go. Carter gets it back, dishes it to duck it, and Avent packs him as he tries to take it up. Here's the penetration, the slice and slash, then the dish. Duck it strong to the basket, Avent over the top. Although Volsi made a pretty good play, Avent on the over the top with the foul. Well, that's what made Seton Hall such a strong team last year was their defense, as you saw both Volsi and Avent were there up high. You and I talked about it earlier, everybody focuses on what Seton Hall lost, and they lost some great players, Ramos and Morton, both playing in the NBA now. But Avent, Voltsy, and Cooper played considerable time last year. And this team is quietly confident about being a little better than what people expect them to be. They did lose a lot, but four of their five starters were, at one time or another, rated in the top 100 as high school players. And three of the four were in the top 50. Chasing after the ball, it'll be Seton Hall ball as Duckett went down to grab it. Actually, they're giving it over to Rutgers. I thought Duckett had lost it. I think they whistled that Avent touched it on the baseline. Here we get a look at it. Rugby time. Duck it to the turf. And there's Avent. Split on the baseline. Good call. Good call by the officials there. Earl Duncan tries to go around the pick. Savage set it up. Foul was called by Co on Cooper. <laughs> Savage is going to try to flush that one. Foul before the shot on the bump out front by Cooper. Here we get a look at it. Side cleared for Savage here. And then there's the bump. 12-11 is a one-point game. 15-58 left. We'll be back as Bob Wenzel works his crew. One-point lead, but Seton Hall is red hot from the floor, Clark Kellogg. They're shooting 71%. Rutgers at 57% right now, so both teams are pretty hot. They're really shooting it well. Seton Hall comes in shooting 53% as a group. Rutgers, though, only at 44% so far this season. And Rutgers has had a couple of poor shooting games, games that they, they've managed to win anyway against Delaware. They shot around 33% and still managed to win the game. They're a pretty good free throw shooting team, though, at 72% as a unit. Duncan behind his back and around to here, throws it up. Not a good shot, and Avent comes down with a rebound. Boy, Taylor showing no ill effect in that sprained ankle. I was just going to say, he's moving pretty quickly for a guy who almost wasn't able to play this game. Nice pass underneath. Cooper has Savage right there. Gets the shot off. Volsey follows. It won't go. thinks about the three-pointer. Nice move as it goes around, but there to block it is Duckett. Well, I think DeHair may have gotten that shot off had he kept it in his right hand. Now watch, he's going to bring it right back to the defense here with the left hand. Right in the path of Duckett. Duckett. Excellent defensive play, though, that time by Anthony. Gary DeHair showing some good moves to get to the back of the basket, basket, rather. And then not managing to get the shot off as Duckett was there to swat it up into the first row. Taylor moves into the paint, hangs off the glass. And Keith Hughes comes away with the rebound. And Carter will bring it up. Keith Hughes, the transfer from Syracuse. 
Nice help that time by Taylor. Bam on the floor. Good job by Hughes to get it to Savage. He lets a three-pointer go that's short. That's really where the hall excels. Coming over to help out when anybody gets dribble penetration and then giving that offensive team usually just one shot. Brian's balls. He finds a path, goes down it, and hits the shot. <laughs> nice little move by Volsi to walk down the lane. The left side of the lane cleared itself, and Volsi took it in. Dadica running the point now, which is where he played most of the time last year. Was the leading assist man on the team a year ago. Hughes turns around and gets the shot. Bob Wenzel really likes Keith Hughes. He likes his body and the ability he has to play inside and out. Again, consistency has been his problem, but he'll be a marquee player in the A-10. Avent looks for an opening, finds Volsi. Nice move, but offensive foul as he tried to hook his way around the defensive player. Oh, 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 P.J. can't believe it, and I don't know if I do either. Volsi looked like he made a pretty clean move. We've, we've got to look at it here. There's a little pump fake. Ah! <laughs> Maybe a little elbow right. as he tried to hook yeah, his he, way around Ducky. Yeah, he got the chicken wing out there a little bit. <laughs> the ball is turned over, and Seton Hall will bring it back up as Dadica felt the pressure. Daryl Crisp now into the game for Seton Hall, a freshman. Guards for Seton Hall are both freshmen. The hair was fouled by Carter before he got the shot off. Cream player, 14-13, Rutgers has the lead by one. A freshman backcourt, but a pretty good freshman backcourt for the Hall. An excellent freshman backcourt. The hair leading his team in scoring, and Chris gives him quality minutes off the bench. He'll probably play a little more because of Taylor's injury. Wolsey has blocked the crisp, is there to bail him out. Avent wants to hair, who broke free and is there off the glass, it won't drop. Cooper tries to follow right back to Volsey, he can't get the shot either. Carter just pulls up, the shot is short, nobody underneath but blue jerseys. Oh, 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 to oh, oh, what a great pass by Michael Cooper. A touch pass by the guy with the tight bicep. Michael Cooper gives you so much from that forward position. He bangs away like a guy who's much taller. Savage finds a lane along the baseline. Can't get it to go, but it's tipped up and in. And the full court pressure by Rutgers really hasn't been a factor here in the early going. Cooper open, stops, pops, and hits it. You know, Michael Cooper is what I call a stat sheet stuffer. He's going to give you some assists, he's going to give you some boards, he's going to give you some points, and he's going to give you good defensive effort. He's going to fill up the stat sheet come games in. Seton Hall with a one-point lead. 12-20 left here in the first half. Hughes battling underneath, can't get it, and Cooper comes away with it again. Nice help that time by Avent. They had him open. Chris didn't see him. Number 33, Lee Perry in the game for Rutgers. The foul is called there as Chris was trying to work his way free. Seton Hall getting ready to bring players in. Earl Duncan is coming back in. Anthony Duckett as well, and Daryl Smith coming in. Back in the lineup. Rutgers. Clearly Rutgers a little deeper. Seton Hall very, very thin along their bench, especially with Winchester out. Winchester was their first man off the bench, and he has to sit out, injured his ankle in practice yesterday. So P.J.'s really shorthanded. Again, foul trouble would really bring his lack of depth to the forefront in this game, but so far, Adrian and Volson doing a pretty nice job of staying outside, staying out of foul trouble. The reason for the holdup is they were questioning where the players should report into the timer. They've got it straightened out now, and Seton Hall will inbounds. Chris with it. The fans really getting on Daryl Chris, the freshman. <laughs> Every time he touches the ball, you hear the cheer go out. Boy, but how about the poise of the Pirates thus far? They haven't been rattled. 
pavement along the baseline, doesn't hit anything. Until maybe then. Earl Duncan for three, just like that. There's the pressure again. Earl Duncan with eight points in the game already, averaging 14 on the season. Good defense by Rutgers, but the hair finds an opening. The shot won't go. A big collision underneath, but no whistle. play straight man-to-man -man unless they get into foul trouble. They're going to play a tough man-to-man. -man. Ball is knocked loose and Smith couldn't hang on to it and Chris comes away with it. Good pass to Avon. All alone goes for the dunk but he's hacked by Smith. Boy, excellent feeding of the post that time by Chris. Avon a little slow in his move. Here he has an opportunity. Takes the rhythm bounce. That slowed him up. That fraction of a sec second with the rhythm bounce allowed Smith to get back and commit the foul and force Avent to try to come up with two from the line. Mike Jones, a freshman, outstanding freshman out of Mooresville, Pennsylvania, number 15, checks into the game for Rutgers. Averaged 24 points in high school a year ago, and he's one of their top recruits coming in this year. Anthony Avent will try and tie this game up now for the Hall. And what's been a close one right from the start. No one able to put a real run together. He knocks it down, and we are tied at 19 with 10.47 left. Seton Hall and Rutgers in the Rack Pack is going crazy already. This telecast is an exclusive presentation of Creative Sports Marketing in association with ESPN. Any use, rebroadcast, or other transmission of this game without the written consent of Creative Sports Marketing and ESPN is prohibited. Don't do it. <laughs> All tied up at 19 here. What we expected to be a good game has been everything we expected thus far. Rutgers a very good three-point shooting team, 39% on the year so far tonight, three of four. Jones just lets that one go, and it's too long. Chris with the pressure back from Jones again. Well, they're really trying to flash Avent and Volsi to the ball in their half-court offense. The hair gets up in the lane, won't drop. Volsi is there with a strong rebound. Missed time jump that time by Duckett enabled Volsi to get to the weak side offensive board. Volsi with six points in the game. <laughs> Savage goes up and down in the turnover as they call the walk. <laughs> Savage pointing to somebody, but Tom, you can't jump up and bounce it to yourself. Rob Wenzel, who was a star here at Rutgers, MVP twice during his playing career back in 70, 71, 72 in those years. A star player here came back to be the coach. Dadica is back in the game, as is Lee Perry. DeHair turns around and lets it go. He will keep shooting even when they're not falling. <laughs> That's the mentality of a score. You know, I'm always one shot away from getting out of the slump. Harry DeHair just two for eight at this point. A little push was called before the shot. The second foul on Franz Volsi with 9.37 left, so there's something P.J. was a little bit worried about. Well, Volsi's fouled out one of their four games, and Avon has fouled out two of the four. Wolsey will stay on the floor, though, because Seton Hall is so thin. Keith Hughes from three. Knocked away. Nice job by Perry to knock it away from Cooper. And Savage lets it go. That's long. Taylor back on the floor for Seton Hall, and they leave Chris in the game as well. 
Trying to, trying to run a little cross screen between Volpe and, and Avent. Press from way out. It's short. Knocked away nicely by Dadica, but Taylor saves it. Boy, a good quickness to stay that save that ball. Seton Hawks are playing a little triangle game with their three big guys and keeping Taylor and Chris on the perimeter. Avent turns around. That one won't fall. And Hughes hauls down another rebound. Attica works on the freshman Chris. The shot will not go. Bonds Volsey from way out. He shows good range. Boy, he's just smooth and efficient. Doesn't try to do anything he really can't. That time had the little open 15 to 16 footer and buried it. Seton Hall on a 6 to nothing run. Volsey with 8 points, and they've opened up a 23-19 lead. Savage turns around. And again, Seton Hall does such a good job of clearing under the boards. One shot and out for Rutgers. And Cooper comes back and hits a three-pointer. Seton Hall now on a 9 nothing run. And Bob Wenzel wants a timeout. Seton Hall up 26 to 19 at this point. PJ has his boys running early. Rutgers has missed their last six shots. They're 7 of 20, shooting 35%, and they're not getting any second chances. Seton Hall does an excellent job on their defensive boards. Here's the transition pull-up by Dadica. Nothing but blue shirts on the glass. Four blue shirts. Dadica makes a late effort, but Volpe clearly controls the board. Number 25, Jim Dickinson, the seven-foot freshman, checks into the game for Seton Hall. last three and a half minutes for the Hall. Nice point, nice time to get Dickinson in the game. The Hall with a decent lead. Uh-oh. The call a foul on Taylor, it looks like. Dickinson was trying to get over there to help, got over a little late. Taylor couldn't believe it was on him. Here's the penetration. Duncan, again, he's such a physical guard. When he gets there in traffic, he's strong enough to finish it off. And Taylor picks up the foul, and Art McDonald whistled it counted, and he has a chance for, for three. Duncan has 10 of Rutgers' 21 points in the game thus far. The transfer for Syracuse. Hammers down to convert it. PJ has got to be pleased with the effort of this club. He was worried about the crowd factor and the foul problem. Cooper gets Hughes up in the air and hits the shot. <laughs> I wonder if he knew Mike Cooper was going to get off to the offensive start that he's gotten off to in this first half. Certainly a bonus for P.J. Cooper with nine points already. We still have seven minutes left here in the first half. Hughes spins, works on the freshman, and the freshman gets called for the foul, Dickinson. Boy, that was a bailout foul there because Hughes had nowhere to go. Dickinson certainly had him cut off and got committed the foul as Hughes tried to go up with the hand, but he did do a nice job of defense on him originally. Here we see Hughes on the floor, little twirl move here, and then right into Dickinson. Oh boy, that's uh, that's one you got to let go. The hands were straight up in the air. It's not like he was reaching over top. Hughes, they said, Hughes will remind you, uh, transferred from Syracuse, sat out last year, and really missed most of the year before at Syracuse because he didn't get a lot of playing time. And then he decided to transfer, actually left Syracuse in February. And they say he looks great one night, and then the next night he just can't get it together. And the layoff is probably a big factor. Stolen away nicely by Carter. Duncan among a bunch of blue jerseys. Oh! Still bangs it off the glass. Oh, oh, oh. He clearly wasn't squared up on that one. Little trick shot by Duncan. Earl Duncan with 13 points and gets the crowd roaring once again. Dickinson tries to feed it down low to Avent, but can't click and they turn it over. One more dribble and Dickinson's may be able to complete that pass with a better angle. 
But Rutgers doing what Coach Winslow wanted them to do, force a turnover with the pressure and get the crowd into it. Spinning turns, it won't go, and again, there's that one shot, and we're out of here. Really a tough shot that time by Hughes. The defense hadn't been moved to catch it and turn around and shoot an off-balance jump shot, not the shot you want when you're trying to make a run. Seton Hall goes into a bit of a delay game, but Cooper goes right around, puts it up, oh, falls, oh, and he's fouled. <laughs> Don't show me your whole game tonight, Mike. <laughs> See, they lifted everybody else, and Cooper just has clear sailing to the hoop. Hughes a little late reacting. As a matter of fact, the whole Rutgers defense was raised to the foul line. That opened up the backside for Cooper. Look at that. Everybody's lifted, and then the penetration. This is a great ball fake here. Two-foot stop, power move. That's such a great basketball play there by Cooper. You saw Seton Hall use that offense last week in the ACC East Challenge against Wake Forest, but they were stalling at that point. He certainly didn't stop <laughs> Cooper as he saw the opening and just took off. Hughes with the arm out. Shot won't fall, gets his own rebound, and that one does. That's great second effort, but you can see why Hughes is struggling from the floor. Shooting percentage always a function of shot selection, and he's really taking some tough shots that time, able to get his own miss. Seton Hall lines it up again. Cooper says, I'll go this way. Maybe not. Taylor working on Perry, or Carter, rather. And Carter commits the foul. That's Carter's third foul. And that's a big factor. He's the first guy who comes off the bench for Rutgers. And he'll sit back down. Rick Dattica comes back in. Craig Carter was really a starter for most of his career and took the six-man role this year. Bob Wendell told me he's, a, he's accepted that role very well and is shooting 57% from the floor. And he's a slicer, slasher, very active type of player and gives him a lift off the bench. Dickinson, crowd getting on him too. They know who the freshmen are. <laughs> The hair working on Dattica. Dattica strips him of the ball. Jim Dickinson, a seven-footer. In a game against Iona, hit a three-pointer. He became the first Big East player, seven-foot player, ever to hit a three-pointer. And a pretty nifty move there along the baseline. Well, I talked to PJ today, and he talked about Dickinson being a project, but nonetheless, he has some qualities that you really can't teach. Nice soft hands, good touch, and was continued work he's going to be a factor down the road Duncan loses the handle but Duncan follows afterwards Anthony Avent picks up his second foul of the night and only 430 sets left here in the first half but nonetheless Seton Hall worried about those fouls because again we can't point it out enough they do not go very deep along the bench I think P.J. would really be glad to get into the locker room at halftime with Avent and Volsi with no more than two. Absolutely. Ducky gets a kind bounce there. Well, I was here last year for the A-10 Conference Championship game, Kent State Rutgers, and this place was just rumbling and rolling, and they haven't really picked it up yet because Seton Hall has done a nice job of maintaining their poise and keeping the crowd out of it, but this place can really erupt when Rutgers gets going. Dickinson is under there to get the miss, and Seton Hall leads it 33-29. Cooper trying to break free along the baseline. Savage was there to cut his lane off. left in the first half. Taylor worked on the freshman Jones, and Jones did a good job. Taylor steals it back, though. Pass over to Dickinson. He's seven feet. If he was 7'2", he would have had that pass. <laughs> Just a shade high. There's P.J. He's got to be feeling pretty good inside. There he is encouraging his troops. Big East Coach of the Year. He's the Coach of the Year for the entire nation, pretty much, 
consensus choice after taking the hall all the way to that title game. Savage wants to work on Cooper, knocked up in his face by Dickinson. That shot is short. Well, a great rebound by Duncan. Dunk it underneath. Perry is whistled for the foul. Dickinson really doing a pretty nice job on him. He's doing some quality time here in the first half and doing a good job with it. Again, he's a space eater. Both teams are over the limit. Earl Duncan checks back into the game. Boy, after the good start, Rutgers has gone cold from the field, and that's been a problem for this squad, their field goal percentage. And quite honestly, they forced some shots inside, but their perimeter shots have been pretty decent shots, I think. Dickinson shows nice form at the free throw line. Five to 29, a six-point lead for the Seton Hall Pirates over the home team, Rutgers and the Scarlet Knights trying to come back. Seton Hall leads it by six, and Clark, Rutgers' shot selection not as good as Coach Bob Wenzel would like. Well, here's a forced attempt by Hughes. Good defense by Cooper and Avon. Now, he's going to stay with to get it up on the glass, a little rushed off balance. This one had a positive result as Hughes was able to convert finally, but on a couple of other occasions, Hughes and his teammates have forced some things inside, and there you look at points in the paint. Rutgers only with 10, and a lot of those attempts have been forced inside. Seton Hall, on the other hand, with 20 because they've done a nice job being patient inside. The rebounds pretty even at this point. Seton Hall with 19, Rutgers with 20. We talked about Avan and Volsey and the force that they are up front for Seton Hall. Again, they weren't starters last year, but they played a lot of quality time. That's right. They gained valuable experience on that march through the NCAA tournament. Daryl Crist is in the game for Seton Hall. Duck it, and Dickinson knocks it away. He just seems to stand his ground. Doesn't do anything fancy. He isn't up there with the, with the people up around the rim, but he's still knocking the ball away. And when you're 7-2, if you're in good position and use your hands, you can make a difference. Charge is called on the hair, and they turn it over. Duncan was in there with position. Number one foul, the first on Terry DeHair, the freshman. Ground level coming right at you. Ooh, Duncan moving a little bit, but was in excellent defensive position that time. Well, Duncan might have got the benefit of the doubt there. His feet looked like they were still moving a little bit. This is a mismatch. Dickinson out on the floor. Savage tried to dish it to Perry. He couldn't. The foul was called on Duckett. Duckett picks up his second foul of the night. And Keith Hughes will come back into the game for the Scarlet Knight. Lee Perry will go to the bench. Lee Perry, his brother Tim, plays for Phoenix in the NBA. He was the star, of course, over at Temple, also in the Atlantic 10. You know, Seton Hall, because they're thin on the bench, really is enjoying this pace of game. It allows their players not to get, not, it allows them to not get as tired as they would if this game was a 94-foot game like Rutgers would like to play. Exactly, we expected Rutgers definitely to force the pace of the game. Avan picks up his sixth point of the night. But you know, it's really tough to run if you aren't getting stops defensively and rebounding and outletting the ball. And Rutgers really doesn't like to push it after make. Chris doing a nice job on Datica. Hughes gets it in the paint, turns. And there's Avan pulling down the rebound. Once again, one shot and we turn and go the other way. Big time board that time in traffic by double A. See what kind of adjustment Rutgers makes to this four on top, one handling the ball type of offensive set for, for Seton Hall. Seton Hall 
has built up an eight-point lead with 2.20 left there. The biggest lead of the game for Seton Hall. Using the clock a little bit here. Now they're going to get into something. Down to seven on the shot clock. Chris doesn't get the shot off, but he's fouled. Foul is on Earl Duncan. Reminder coming up at halftime. Be sure to join Chris Fowler in our studios. We'll have scores of other games. A live preview of that game. A top 10 matchup between Missouri and Arkansas. Is that a battle or what? That should be a dandy. Todd Day and Mayberry at Arkansas. Doug Smith, Anthony Keeler. That should be one that goes up and down full throttle from start to finish. Bob Carpenter and Dan Bonner will be on hand to bring you that game. Rick Dattica really hasn't got into the offense. Savage with a nice move, changes hands, kisses the glass, and it goes. Oh, a nifty little flashing play that time by Savage. Well, again, the Hall has done a nice job of controlling tempo and controlling the backboard. Avent left alone and hits the little hook shot. You know, Bob Lindo, I talked to him yesterday, and he really was concerned about the inside strength of Seton Hall. And it's really shown itself, I think, probably more at the defensive end. Well, Duncan trying to find his way through. And dribbles it off his knee and out of bounds. Under a minute and a half left here in the first half. Seton Hall leads by eight, 39-31. Cooper is left there, makes a nice move, off the glass, I don't know if he wanted to bank that one home, but he got it. I don't know if he would have called that one in horse or not, but I am impressed with this game, he's doing it all. 14 points for Michael Cooper, and a 10 point lead for Seton Hall, with under a minute left in the first half. Hughes tries to fight his way free, but still be Rutgers ball, as they say it went off Cooper. I think Chris thought it went off one of the Rutgers players because he actually had a chance possibly to save it. Datica for three. And he bangs it down. I just said a moment ago, Datica hadn't been shooting much, and they need him in their offense to win. Well, this team takes a lot of three-point shots, and he's capable from there. Shot clock is off. Seton Hall doesn't have to shoot, but Cooper says, I will anyway. Dickinson bangs it off the glass. <laughs> oh, a good thing the glass was there. It stopped it into the hole. That would have been in the parking lot up front if it wasn't for the glass. 15 seconds left. Seton Hall 43, Rutgers 34. Duncan with a three-pointer that's short. Perry with a strong rebound. Foul before he can get the shot off, and with six seconds left, it was Daryl Chris with his foul. <laughs> Seton Hall has done a nice job of, I, mean, I can't say quiet in this crowd because it's still loud, but keeping them not quite into the game the way Rutgers would like. Keeping them on their feet as opposed to on their feet. And that's a big part of this environment, this crowd, the excitement they can generate and the lift they can give this club. But Seton Hall has done it inside at both ends of the floor. Lee Perry cuts into the lead before halftime the best way possible with no time ticking off the clock, but he makes this one Seton Hall with six seconds left to rush it up the other end. Time ticking off the clock. Gets a three-pointer off. Nowhere near Chris follows, but not before the buzzer goes. 43 to 36. The Battle of New Jersey, the first half, goes to Seton Hall. Right now, for more scores and highlights from around the country on this college basketball Wednesday night, let's go back to our studios and join Chris Fowler. Okay, thanks, John. So an inexperienced Seton Hall team so far passing the first test of the season on the road against a hostile crowd. Welcome to our college basketball halftime report. News from the coast. Seton Hall impressive. They have a seven-point lead at halftime. Let's go back to the rack. John Saunders in the 